Fantastic. Welcome everybody to the seventh and final webinar in our series of food strategy for your city. My name is Florence Pardo from the Food Foundation and as always a pleasure to welcome so many participants from around the world today. The series so far has looked at what is uh, involved and who is involved in creating and delivering a food strategy. But to realise the vision of your ambitious strategy, that will require a whole city effort from across all stakeholder groups. And today we'll be looking at how you can grow and galvanise a food movement in your city using tools such as branding, communication and media um, and uh, celebration and campaigns. So we will jump straight to our first speaker. It's a pleasure to be introducing Tom Andrews who is Director of the Sustainable Food Places UK. Tom's worked on health, environment and sustainability issues with a wide range of organisations in the UK and internationally over the last 30 years. And for the last 15 years, he's worked at the Soil Association, one of the UK's leading healthy and sustainable food charities. And there he manages a range of uh, programmes and projects, including sustainable food places. I'm going to be sharing Tom's slides for him here. So let me share my screen again. Thank you, Florence. And hello, everyone. Lovely to virtually meet you all. Um, I've just been asked to give an introduction to today's session. Um, and I'm just going to talk about good food movements within the context of our UK experience with sustainable food places. So. I'll just begin by introducing the programme. Uh, Sustainable Food Places has been going on for nearly eight years now. Uh, it is a large UK-wide programme and our, our main goal is what you can see there. It is about making healthy and sustainable food a defining characteristic of where people live. Uh, next slide. So it's a very simple approach, but quite complicated to deliver as I'm sure all of you will have experienced. But the approach is generally we work with places, towns, cities, boroughs, counties uh, to develop a, and establish a cross-sector food partnership. So that normally includes the local government, uh, public sector organisations, voluntary sector organisations, charities and businesses. We work with them to develop a food vision uh, for how they want to change the food system and make healthy and sustainable and equitable food available to everyone. Uh, and then we work with them through grants and uh, individual support to turn that vision into a reality. On the left, you can see we work through what we call a systems approach, uh, which we break down into what we call the six key issues. So the food partnership is the food governance and strategy uh, area. As you can see below that, we obviously have a whole strand around healthy food and food, good food access. We have a strand around good food economy, which is critical. Uh, and in the bottom right corner, you can see we also do uh, what we call food for the planet. So climate, nature, waste, and all those sorts of things, environmental things. On the bottom left, you can see that we uh, have a specific work stream around catering and procurement, because we believe that you can deliver so much positive change through that particular area. And then finally, on the top right, you will see that we have a whole stream of work around what we call building a good food movement. And, and uh, building on what Florence has said, our feeling is that whilst having a partnership and a plan is really useful, if you really want to change the food system in a city or another, or, or another geography, you have to reach beyond the usual suspects, as we call them. We have to try and create a space where everyone feels that they want to and can get involved in that food system change through their own action. Um, very briefly on the top right, we are currently working with 56 food partnerships across the UK, uh, and that is likely to be 70 or 80 by the end of this year. So there's a lot of energy in this space. So I'm just gonna, this is from our framework for action, and it just gives you a sense of why and how we think food, uh, good food movement is really important. We combine the food movement idea with this whole piece around building public awareness and the idea of active food citizenship. So I'm gonna read that out to you. We believe that to drive a shift towards a healthier and more sustainable food requires high public awareness of food issues and widespread participation in food related activity. So that can be any kind of activity. It could be an individual in a school being involved in growing. It could be a large corporation providing healthy and sustainable food to their 
to their workers. It could be a university transforming the catering in its space. It could be the local authority creating opportunities for new sustainable food businesses across the city. But the main thing is that it all needs to be feel part of one big movement for food system change. Um, within our framework, we have obviously identified specific areas and I'm gonna just tease out a couple of them. So the first one is around the idea of lots and lots of different kinds of communications and events that inspire people. So the first thing is about getting people inspired about what you want to achieve and back to enjoying good food. A lot of people in the UK eat some pretty awful food, to be honest, it's not good for them and it's not good for the planet. So it's getting people excited about good food again. You have to, as well as communicating to them, we feel you have to provide actual practical engagement opportunities, getting hold of food, cooking it, growing it, sharing it, um, so that it's creating those connections with people and where food comes from. Um, I'll say a bit more about this idea of a public facing campaign. Many, many of our members have now started to develop quite large public facing campaigns to try and get as many people involved and excited as possible. And there are also quite a lot of our members who are working really hard to create the space and the opportunity for food actors from every part of the city and every part of life to connect and actually work collaboratively together so that what they're doing is delivering more than the sum of their parts. Uh, in many cities, there are lots of people working around a food agenda, but often they're not very connected and they don't know how to work with each other. So those are four of the big areas that we work on around this agenda. And I'm now just going to tease out one of our best examples of this. So if you could give me the next slide. I can't see the next slide, so I'm afraid I can't start talking until it appears. I think there might be a slight oh, delay. No, that's, that's great. So um, in sustainable food places, we have an award system. We have a bronze, silver and gold award system for the cities that are doing the most amazing things around food system change. Uh, and just this summer in June, Bristol became the second only place in the UK to get the Sustainable Food Places Gold Award. Now, Bristol do, is doing extraordinary things across all aspects of food, but one of the areas that it actually made a point of in its, in its submission for gold was around this idea of creating an inclusive good food movement. So their movement involved a number of different things. It was about getting people across every sector involved um, and across every food issue. The reason I'm showing this, this slide is you can see this is from their application for the award. And the reason why I'm raising it, and I've got a, a, a link on the next page, which we can put in the chat, is that they have within their 100 page, page award application, they have written an entire section around how they grew their good food movement in Bristol. So I think there's lots and lots that colleagues around this table could learn from, from that. So if you want to access that, we'll put the link in in the chat. But there were two particular aspects of their work that I wanted to bring attention to. And if you could go on to the next slide. So I talked earlier about the idea of a citywide campaign. One of the things that Bristol did was a thing called Going for Gold, which was a public facing campaign aimed at individuals and organizations. And they built this, this whole thing around six ideas, six big areas that they wanted to drive forwards, which you can see on the icons. So a campaign to support local food, to end food waste, to support well-being, to support cooking, cooking from scratch, essentially, uh, supporting the connections between members of the movement and taking individual and organizational actions to support the vision for the whole city. So this is one part of what they did on a website. And I think they ended up with uh, a number of thousands of individual uh, actions from people in the members of the public to support the city's change around food. And they also got support from, I think something in the region of five, 600, 700 organizations across the city, all working and taking action in support of changing the food system in the city for the better. And then another aspect, and this is the final slide uh, of this section, and then there's one more after that, actually. Uh, the next slide, one of the things they have tried to make sure of is that they create a space where anyone can engage in a citywide conversation around how the food system needs to change. So the whole thing is informed by anyone and everyone who has felt inspired about getting involved in the food world. 
So this point about creating a conversation space and a networking space feels really important as you try to change that food system. My final slide, and this is not to do with Bristol, is another thing that we do in the UK, which is each year we also run national campaigns as part of sustainable food cities or sustainable food places. And this has also provided a really good way of galvanizing and inspiring people at a local level to get engaged in campaigns that are both local and national on issues that are really important to them. So we had a big campaign around well, sustainable. Well, 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 we had a big campaign around sustainable fish cities and sugar smart uh, in previous years. Sugar smart is trying to reduce the amount of sugar in the food that people are served and in manufacturing. Um, the most recent campaign was veg cities, which is working to increase both the production and consumption of veg. And our campaign that is about to be launched is called Food for the Planet. And that is full of actions that locally people can get involved in as part of a local and a national campaign for tackling the climate and nature emergency through food and farming. So this idea of national stroke local campaigns, I think is also a really useful thing to think of. And you can design campaigns around issues that are really important to the, to the people living in your city. Uh, that's it from me, as you can see, and if someone, if one of my Food Foundation colleagues could cut and paste that Bristol Going for Gold uh, link into the chat. If you want more information on the Bristol piece of work, then that is the place to go. But if you want any more information as well, I can stick my email address in the chat. So anyone who wants to get in contact, please do. And thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Tom. That was a really perfect introduction to some of the things that I mentioned at the beginning there. Um, and lovely to see all those colourful campaigns. Um, and I will absolutely share that link in the chat shortly. But first of all, uh, it's an absolute honor to be introducing our next speaker. Next up, we have Ms. Rita Tiotia, who is the Honorable Chairperson of the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Ms. Tiotia joined the Indian, Indian Administrative Service in the year 1981 and has vast experience over 35 years of uh, policy making and practice. She's worked as a Commerce Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce and Industry from July 2015 to 2018. And earlier she had worked as the Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for the Government of India, focusing on areas spanning across food safety, drugs control administration, and national diseases control programs. So it's an absolute pleasure to hand over to you, Ms. Otia. Thank you so much. And, uh... Thank you to the Food Foundation for actually organizing this uh, very important uh, webinar uh, to share information across the globe uh, of, I think, initiatives which seem to be happening across uh, the world. Am I audible, Florence? Yes, absolutely. Loud and clear. All right. So it's worthwhile as we start to ponder that across the world today, we are in a sense united by our common concerns around health, nutrition, and sustainability. Uh, today, I can see that at this webinar, we are joined by city representatives from different parts of the world who are passionate and committed to building a good food environment in their cities an environment that's not just safe and healthy for citizens, but is also sustainable for the planet. Eating right is perhaps the first step towards enabling our bodies to function optimally. The phrase, we are what we eat, is something that is understood in different cultures and different traditions around the world. And we know that uh, safe and nutritious food is extremely critical to our health and well-being. The COVID-19 uh, outbreak over the last one and a half years has brought to the forefront for all of us the need to study, uh, to strengthen our country's food ecosystems to a much greater extent. Whether it is regulators, administrators, and citizens, we all recognize that a sharpened focus on food, nutrition, health, immunity, and sustainability is needed for a healthy tomorrow. Today, we are 
on ensuring preventive health care in order to minimize the burden of diseases and help countries in tackling the rising burden of diet-related diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. So nutrient deficiencies and toxicity from unsafe food and poor dietary habits are li linked today to nearly all modern health conditions. And the double burden of undernutrition coupled with the increasing incidence of obesity, particularly amongst our children, is threatening our social and economic fabric. Since food is a common thread linking citizens anywhere and everywhere, the government of India is mainstreaming access to safe, healthy, and sustainable diets through the flagship program, Eat Right India, which is led by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Eat Right is a national movement to transform the food ecosystem of the country by ensuring safe, healthy and sustainable food for everyone at all times. We at the Food Safety and Standards Authority have over the past many years taken a holistic and coordinated approach to food. The Eat Right India initiative is based on global evidence that suggests that any large-scale effort requires implementation at the ground level through convergence with a diverse group of stakeholders from various areas, including government departments, consumer organizations, development partners, industry associations, academia, professional associations, and so on all of those who are working closely on the food systems and across food related issues, as well as the citizens of our cities. The movement and its initiatives are pan India. However, today, as we rapidly urbanize, we realize that it has become extremely critical for city administrators, planners, and other stakeholders to create a holistic city vision based on a food systems approach and to adopt a whole of the government and a whole of society approach where every effort at the city level can involve citizens, food businesses, institutions, and political leaders, as well as influencers, all committed to achieving the vision laid out in the strategy. On the practical side, first and foremost, the cities need to consider having a series of interdepartmental discussions to bring together all food related mandates. Many areas like drinking water, sanitation, school environment, social security issues are all interconnected to health and well being. Hence, an interdepartmental uh, committee can be set up with representatives from all related departments. This would ensure convergence, continuity, scale, monitoring of various initiatives. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Ms. Jyotia, but there's some um, background noise on your line. I'm not sure if you have a microphone that is perhaps rubbing against something. But we're missing a few of a few of your um a few of your sentences just some background noise switch off the air conditioning if that could be it <laughs> perhaps it's that could be wind noise that could be it yeah yeah fantastic yeah thank you is that a little fingers better I, I, we'll see fingers crossed <laughs> all right um further as a second step it is important to focus on community engagement. Cities should identify NGOs, consumer organizations, professionals, and experts from the areas of food, nutrition, and public health who can together contribute through capacity building and behavior change efforts in improving the status of food safety and nutrition. These professionals can engage school, 
and college students, volunteers who can become community champions and ambassadors and conduct various ground level activities to promote safe and nutritious food. Behavior ch change is of course contingent on citizen engagement and is extremely crucial for the success of any large scale program. Tom did refer to this aspect uh, in his presentation. We advocate that cities should organize various innovative activities like walkathons, cyclothons, fairs, uh, consumer awareness drives, and a series of IEC activities targeting both online and offline mediums like TV, radio, cinema, billboards, hoardings, so as to generate mass events. Leveraging the power of social media, influencers and local celebrities, as well as role models from different fields, goes a long way in influencing the choices of people in the right direction. It's also important, we believe, to identify various settings-based environment covering street vendors, fruit and vegetable markets, food kiosks, hawkers, and petty food vendors with a view to improve the overall infrastructure as well as food safety and hygiene across food establishments. Hygiene rating certification for catering establishments, including restaurants, sweet shops, sweet shops, ensures food safety compliances. Workplace campuses and schools can be sensitized for safe, healthy, and sustainable food practices through training and third-party audits and can be certified as eat right campuses and schools. What I've talked about are all strategies which we have adopted in India. Let me also mention that the Food Safety Authority has recently launched a competition for smart cities called the Eat Smart Cities Challenge in collaboration with the Smart Cities Mission. The challenge aims to develop an entire urban food ecosystem in the cities to ensure people have access to safe and nourishing diets. I'm happy to share that though the Eat Smart Cities Challenge uh, has enabled us to have an opportunity to play a pioneering role in developing the concept of integrating food systems work into city planning and development. This challenge is actually helping the participating cities in India to develop a plan that supports a healthy, safe, and sustainable food environment supported by institutional, physical, social, and economic infrastructure, along with the application of smart solutions to combat food-related issues. I believe there will be a lot of learnings from this year long challenge, which we believe can easily be replicated in different cities across the world. We back our efforts uh, on the Eat Right initiative with regulatory support. Our recent regulation on banning of trans fats by January 2022, one year ahead of the global deadline. Our revised labeling, uh, labeling regulations, our packaging regulations, uh, our regulations that govern the food that may be served in schools and around schools and our reused cooking oil regulations are all initiatives that support uh, Eat Right. The response to this entire gamut of efforts from the participating cities is very encouraging. I'd like to congratulate all the stakeholders for their efforts and their good work. I'd also like to appreciate the efforts of our partners, including the Food Foundation for organizing this uh, very interesting event. And I'm certain that this initiative will play a significant role in creating social and behavioral change towards food safety, hygiene, and nutrition in urban settings. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Ms. Teotia, and I would like to echo your, your thanks um, for your participation in this series. Um, it would not have been um, anywhere near as successful without our partnership with, um, with um, FSSAI and Eat Right India, so thank you so much. And for that great comprehensive um, overview there that you gave us from technical solutions to social media, and I love the idea of the, um, the walkathons and the cyclathons as well, so thank you very much. Um, we're going to move to our third and final speaker today. We have joining us from Maputo in Mozambique. We have uh, located him in the room and we're just going to make sure that we can set up um, our interpretation. If you are now on the computer app, this is where um, you'll need to set your interpretation to English so that you can um, hear our speaker. Um, so I'm just going to introduce him for us and then we'll get everything set up. So we have a staff of Daniel Mungone Jiao from the head, uh, he's the head of the Department of Livestock, Fisheries and Extension in Maputo. Uh, he has a master's degree in agrarian development and a degree in agricultural engineering and he has 27 years of professional experience across the fields of training, institutional development and human resource management, planning, program management and projects as well as teaching and research and highlight of that career is 15 years in agriculture with a focus on urban agriculture and agroecology focused on the development of production techniques and technologies, good agricultural practices and food distribution. So hopefully we have Mr. Zhao in the room. Are you with us? And do we have our interpretation set up? Fantastic. Great, excellent news. We can hear you. Thank you so much, Mr. Zhao. I'm going to be sharing a presentation from our speaker. Um, and he will be calling next for us as well. So I should bring that up and share my screen. And we look forward to hearing about this yeah. exciting um, project from Maputo. Please let me know if you can all see the slideshow here. We can see it, Florence. Great, okay. thumbs up, fantastic. Over to you, Mr. Zhao. Yeah. In this presentation, we are going to share an experience we call the Festival of Earth Products, which, on one hand, promotes the production and consumption of local products, and on the other hand, promotes the trade of these products. One of the great challenges at the level of the city of Maputo is marketing. The initiative Festival of Earth Products is an event for the exhibition and sale of locally produced agricultural, livestock and fishery products and the micro-production of other products. In this presentation, experiences from agriculture and livestock are shown, including from small fishing communities spread over three locations. Kanyaka has about nine hectares for agriculture and is one of the districts with the greatest potential for fishing. It includes Katembe, which also has very good potential for fishing. Kamubnakwana has very little compared to Kamavota. In terms of agricultural potential, Kamavota is the largest followed by Kamubukwana, Katembe, and finally, Kanyaka. Next, we will talk a little about the concept of the initiative. As I mentioned before in the introductory slide, the idea is to promote the production and consumption of local products and, on the other hand, to help small-scale artisanal fishermen, family agricultural producers, and small processors in marketing in order to improve their family income and promote local development with economies of scale, despite the challenge of accessing the market to sell products. In general, we seek to improve their ability by placing their products on the market. Although we say product of the earth, the concept of land is to look, it, is to look at it as a community and not as soil, and for that we bring the country as a whole in miniature microcosm, bringing together the three regions of the country – south, centre and north. Most of the time, everyone is involved in these exhibitions. This is an image to show how the exhibitors have been organised and arranged, divided by sections or wards, agricultural producers wing, in particular agroecology, to small animal breeders wing, to artisanal fishermen wing, including fish farmers and wing of typical Mozambican cuisine. 
The initiative started in May 2017 and we moved to 2019. And then we had to stop in 2020 because of COVID-19. We will resume on the 17th of September 2021, but with a different format, as shown in the image below, taking into account the social distance and all of the prevention measures taken because of COVID-19. As of September the 17th of this year, the configuration will be more or less in the format that supports COVID-19 restrictions. We cannot show the exact images as it is a new approach to accommodate COVID-19 prevention measures, which we put in place from September the 17th. As we mentioned before, the products of the land doesn't just mean agricultural products, but also cultural and other production. So you can see in this image that it represents cultural activities. In this image, we are talking about music and dance, in particular, traditional singing and dancing, and typically Mozambican musical instruments. In this image, we show agricultural products, in particular, agroecological products. It also shows the involvement of the media. As we organise the events, we involve other sectors for editing, with the aim of publicising not only the event, but also the main object of the exhibitions. As mentioned earlier, small processors also participate in these events. In this image are products such as jams and other organic products that are based on ingredients from local products and with minimal use of agrochemicals such as preservatives, which means fewer chemicals to be used. Here is an image that illustrates the gastronomy component that is part of the event. It should be noted that the focus here is on typical Mozambican cuisine and this is prepared not only with local products, but also those from all over the country. I would also like to highlight that the event of the Festival of Earth products are based on the need to value neglected native cultures and integrate them into the local gastronomy and diet in order to contribute to combating chronic malnutrition and food insecurity in Mozambique and Maputo City in particular. So what is this new initiative bringing? One of the things worth noting is that it incorporates neglected native cultures in understanding their socio-economic value to the country. There is also a good socio-cultural appreciation of the different ethnic groups in Mozambique, which is degraded. On the question of gastronomy, not only did we radically change the way Mozambicans think, but we also present Mozambican gastronomy to the world. Market access for small producers and the increase in family income, as I mentioned earlier. The promotion of sustainable agricultural practice based on agroecology, which allows for production with minimal use of agrochemicals, which is friendly to the environment and public health. I have already talked about food insecurity and chronic malnutrition before, but I will also highlight food sovereignty, as so far Maputo brings products from neighbouring countries. The event can help promote sustainable socio-economic development, urban agrotourism and eco-culture. Aspects of impacts are related to the reduction of food vulnerability of the citizens of Mozambique and Maputo in particular. Reduced vulnerability of elderly people in nursing homes in Maputo and families headed by orphaned children who are orphaned for different reasons. Furthermore, promoting the preservation of the city's biodiversity and protecting the environment and public health. This slide only indicates the actors involved. It is noteworthy that we work not only with the public sector, but with the private sector and the city's NGOs, including the farmers themselves represented by the local organisation. We are showing the temporal and territorial perspective of the event. <laughs> The adversities and challenges of the festival are that we would like to have this event as, as independent as possible. In other words, managing to secure financial resources, especially gazebos, logistics and transport, which are usually a big challenge at the moment. Another element is to ensure that it is a sustainable activity, and this is yet another challenge for us. Another factor is the question of how it can contribute to the development of the employability that is needed in Maputo. However, we consider these challenges to be very important as they can help to save and restore neglected cultures 
At the same time, we look at typical Mozambican and cultural cuisine, and we can make this a sustainable activity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Zhao. That was um, a, a perfect example of a practical um, way to grow a food movement in a city, and it looked like a fantastic market. I hope to visit one day. So we have time for a few questions if anyone would um, like to, uh, to to ask any of our speakers um, a question. We have our translation available, so you're welcome to um, ask a question to our Portuguese speaker. Um, and just to remind you as well, if you weren't able to access the translation for Mr. Jean's uh, presentation, it will be available um, in the recording, so you can watch that back at a later time. So would anyone like to put a question to any of our speakers? Perhaps one of my, my colleagues who uh, might have picked up on something may have a question for us. Otherwise, we can um, absolutely uh, move on to our opportunity for our, um, our cities to, to share. Let's, Charlene, would, did you have anything you wanted to, um, to, to add to the conversation? No, I think all, all, um, all talks were inspiring and obviously three different contexts, but highlight the importance of engaging a diverse range of stakeholders. And I really love the example from Maputo, which I think a lot of uh, Indian and elsewhere, other cities will, um, will also appreciate as this um, tapping into local food culture and really promoting and celebrating it is key to engaging um, communities that aren't typically engaged at the first stages when we're normally talking to stakeholders through organizations. So. I like that. And then, um, but in relation to Florence, you've asked people to share. And I was, I, I noticed that um, Mr. Al Zubari, um, um, Assam Al Zubari, you're, you've been attending all of the sessions, and it would be great to hear your thoughts and anyone from the smart cities as well about how they've um, benefited from participating in the webinar series. Thank you, Charlene. Well, I know that we do have um, a speaker who um, would like to share. Um, so that will give us um, a, a moment to um, gather his thoughts if he would like to share something with the group as well. Um, but first of all, I would like to hand over to uh, Divya Jyoti Parida, who I hope is on the call, who is the Commissioner um, for uh, Ro Rokela, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, Municipal Corporation, um, and the Chief Executive Officer of the uh, Rokela Smart City Limited. He has passed me um, a couple of slides to share as well, um, but just to um, stress that we only have um, a few minutes uh, for, for you to share. So I'm very happy to share those slides, but um, we will be asking you to keep to about three minutes. Um, are you with us? Would you like to take the floor? Good evening to all, uh, respected members of the Food Foundation, uh, delegates from different countries, smart cities. I welcome all of you on behalf of Rautkela Smart City. A uh, very brief introduction. Uh, Rautkela is one of the steel cities in India highly industrialized, and it is uh, a municipal corporation, the third largest city of the state of Odisha, which is situated on the eastern part of India. As a smart city, we uh, came along with a lot of uh, efforts to improve the nutrition standards and the health standards of the people. And based on that, we participated on the Eat Smart Challenge started by the Smart City Mission in India. So here I uh, uh, start my slides. That's yes, hopefully all... you can see them there. Just us... let me know when you want the next one. Yeah, the next please. So nurturing Raudkala through various food and nutrition thematic interventions has been one of the focal uh, points of our smart city development as we are working towards the US, UN Sustainable Development Goals 2 and 3. As you can see, we have already been acknowledged as one of the 50 cities, according to the Bloomberg Philanthropies, who have worked extensively on the food areas and in the areas where food economy can bring about economy to all the distressed people who are selling food across the city. So we have developed our strategy into four areas. The first area is reshaping our market for distressed sellers. 
where we are putting up cold storage with a lot of public participation in the form of women's self-help groups and through IoT-based operation, we will be able to control the purchase, the selling, and the uh, availability of nutritious food across the city. And this has been one of our hallmark projects which have been identified by Bloomberg Philanthropies. Apart from that, we are redeveloping city food infrastructure in the form of multi-complex food courts, which are around 15 numbers, and we have started identifying them at different places. Our third important aspect is food and nutrition for early childhood development, where we are trying to provide nutritious and uh, fortified foods to the young people who are young masses so that they become healthy and the vitamin and mineral deficiencies taken care of. Mm, that are the biggest so this is uh, uh, solidity. I think there is some interruption. Carry on. Yeah. So we have 390 integrated child development centers dispersing all this nutrition, uh, nutrition rich food to children from seven months old to six years children specifically. Apart from that, we are also uh, looking into city socioeconomic program, which involves food cafeterias open by trained, spatially able people, Mission Sakti cafeteria, which are solely uh, organized and owned by our women's self help groups, which will be coming shortly in Rautila. Next, please. We have other themes also, for example, the WASH program related to food interventions, hygiene rating of hotels, restaurants, sweet meat shop uh, will, all, will be executed as per our SSFI standards. Uh, I would just like to put on a point that in 2023, we'll be hosting the Men's Hockey World Cup in Rautala, along with our capital city, Bhubaneswar. So food security and food hygiene is one of our important programs. Apart from that, we are also looking at a sustainable approach where leftover food can be easily distributed among people who need them on a daily basis. So our Purnanjali program under our corporation looks after these things where leftover food from parties, from hotels, from marriage ceremonies are taken, they are tested, and again, they are easily uh, distributed among people who need the food, those who are needy, vulnerable citizens. And more than 38,000 people have been benefited till now. Apart from that, we are also running the Food for All project. Our Ahar Kendras, which disseminate this food under the nutritious, healthy food, they are being distributed at five weeks for everyone. And around 2,000 meals are served every day different locations like bus stands, railway stations, hospitals, where people are in distress and are in need. Apart from that, we have tapped into uh, needs of schools through Akshara Foundation, which is giving large amount of nutritious food to government schools on a daily basis, known as the midday program. This has not only been able to help children gain good physical health, but has also improved the enrollment in our schools. Next, please. We have a question for you um, in the chat there. How many meals in all have been served under our Kendra and how do you cover everyone under this? Yes, so our Kendra is like a huge kitchen. So in that kitchen, we every day on the basis of demand from the different schools, we prepare the food and through our dedicated logistics supply, we provide hot food meal to each and every school. And uh, this has been going on for quite a while. And actually, it is a very good uh, intervention. Not only has it helped students come to school, but it has reduced the dropout drop rate. And it has also improved the enrollment rate. Because people who are needy, who come from an economic backward class, they are assured of good nutritious meal during the school time, during the lunch time, which helps them not only save some money, but also take care of the nutrition aspect 
of the children who are studying in the schools. Fantastic, thank you. Oh. We may have, I may have to ask you to wrap up um, as we, um, I'd love to be able to open the floor up to anyone else who might care just to uh, share a, a sentence or two on, on what they've learned and what they're going to be doing next in their city. Um, is that okay if we, uh, if, if we move on from, would you like to just uh, give us a brief overview of this slide and um, then we shall move on and see if yeah, anyone else would uh, like to just share. Just quickly move, uh, move along. Uh, so these are some of the eight smart cities challenge requirement that we are doing. More than 800 food business outlets have been identified and certified. We have different markets for different products for, and we are carrying out special surveillance drives. Different samples of these products have been collected and have been tested. We are also uh, looking at eat right campuses like hospitals like RGH and JP are the biggest hospitals in Rautela. We are looking to educational institutions where we are trying to certify the food, the quality and the supply also. IT based feedback mechanisms are in pipeline to get reviews from users. We are also uh, doing our study to identify eat right schools and eat right stations. Next please. Fantastic. I, I'm going to have to stop you there, I'm afraid, but we will absolutely share your slides with um, the, the rest of the group. It's really fantastic to hear of the work that's going on in, in your city. It's, it sounds very inspiring. Um, so congratulations uh, are coming through on the chat from everyone. Um, would anyone else like to take the opportunity to tell us a little bit about what um, they have been doing in their cities? Well, we look forward to hearing from you all in the near future, because I'm sure you are all up to um, lots of exciting things. Um, and, and hopefully the, the um, content in this series has been of use to you. So we are going to spend the next few minutes um, telling you about what's coming next for the um, Food Cities um, work that we're doing. And I'm going to hand over to my colleague Charlene, who's going to tell you a little bit about our emergency food planning session, which is coming up next. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, first of all, just all of the cities that are participating in the Eat Smart Challenge, um, those of you that are selected to move on to the next stage will continue to provide um, support. And those of you that aren't selected but also want to progress um, will be continuing to offer resources, um, a webinar series and so on. So there's, there's um, still opportunity for engagement. And having just heard that wonderful presentation, there will also be an opportunity for yourselves to take part in delivering um, future webinar series. So I just wanted to um, share that first. Um, for us, the second um, webinar series we're beginning to develop now. And this is based on the fact that many of us in cities had to deal with the pandemic crisis. And even those cities that have food policies and food strategies weren't able to um, effectively implement emergency food plans. And you'll probably all be aware that this year we've also seen more climate change impact that cities are having to deal with. There have been fires and flooding, conflict continues leading to refugee and migration. So cities all over the world are having to deal with so much more. So our next series of webinars will be focused on how cities respond to emergencies and how we integrate those plans into our food strategies so we are prepared. Um, I think it's become obvious that whether governments um, think of cities as responding or not, as we are this, the regions that most of the world's population want to and live in, we have to respond. So um, we'll have about four webinars between October and December, and they will also be accompanied by um, fact sheets that are going to be developed. We're calling them What Works fact sheets. And we hope to launch the series at the annual MUFPP meeting in Barcelona. So those of you that haven't signed up, hopefully you'll get a chance to sign up between now and then so that you can participate also in um, the annual meeting. Um, and then after that, we will be opening it up to the cities for the cities themselves to decide on what kind of learning they want to participate in, who they want to hear from, what they want to present, 
whether they want to establish partnerships, regional partnerships or international partnerships and um, so on. So um, we're really looking forward to continuing to engage. I have a list of everyone who's participated in the webinar series and I'll be reaching out to you to ask how you'd like to continue participating. Over to you, Florence. Fantastic, thank you, Charlene. Yeah, really exciting to hear about what's coming next. Um, we also have a learning platform launching shortly as well. Uh, the Food Foundation will be uh, launching a new website in about a month's time. And on that, we, would, we will be hosting our um, Food Cities learning platform. I'm going to share um, a little slide for you here, um, which will tell you a little bit more about what will be on there. Now, this is going to be an open website available to anyone who would like to come and have a look at it. Um, and we hope you'll find it useful. So. Hopefully you can see my slide here. Oh, I just come to the wrong one. So on that learning platform, we will have all of the content from this series, the food strategy for your city. You'll be able to look back at the recordings, which will break down into each speaker. So you can look at those case studies. Um, and that'll be looking at this process that we've gone through in this series, the strategy behind the strategy, as we might think of it. We'll also have a section looking at different themes uh, within your strategy and within your approach to food in your city. So things like safe and nutritious diets, sustainability, etc. And within each of those sections, we'll talk a little bit about that theme. We'll look at case studies and we'll provide resources that will help you working on those specific areas. We'll also have a section of resources. So we've looked at um, the wealth of resources that are out there. There are many toolkits and guidelines and frameworks available for cities. And we're really trying to boil those down to simplify them uh, into a digestible um, format for you. So you can browse them, you can find the ones that are most relevant and most useful to the work that you're trying to do. We'll also have a section featuring our partners across the Food Cities 2022 project and also looking at global networks that are available for you to participate in such as the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact and others and what they might provide you uh, and what is expected of you if you're going to participate in those networks. We'll also have um, a news section which will also include blogs and this is really an opportunity as well for you to be featured on the platform. So we'd invite any cities that are working on food policy, on food strategy, to submit to their news, what you've been doing, what uh, interventions you've implemented that um, have, have been exciting in your city. So we are gonna have an open invitation to you to write blogs for our website and to be featured on that learning platform. We will of course be telling you about events that we have coming up. Um, and also other key events that other um, organizations internationally are running um, concerning city food policy. Um, and of course, we'll have a section holding those resources that Charlene just mentioned um, and recordings from our webinars um, of the emergency food planning series. So we will, of course, be sending you uh, an email with all of that information. Um, and with the recording from today, with a link to all of the recordings that have previously gone. And I'll also be sending around a survey about this series because we'd really love to hear from you um, what has worked for you, what you found really useful, what we can improve so that we can make sure that as we go forward, all of the webinars and all of the resources that we're presenting are of maximum use um, to you in your cities. So um, that just leaves me to thank all of you for participating um, throughout the series. Uh, a huge thank to, uh, thanks to our three speakers today, Tom Andrews, Mr. Atia, and Mr. Zhao, and um, to our translators as well who are on the call. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. And we really are excited to see what work emerges from your cities. Uh, and we look forward to continuing our journey working together in the future. Thank you very much and hopefully we'll see you all again before long. Goodbye.